Hi everyone and welcome. This is Sandy Holterhouse and today we are going to be talking about pescatarian, politarian, and flexitarian diets as we continue to explore plant-based diets. So I'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, we're going to first talk about pescatarian. So pescatarian is a vegetarian diet that includes sources of fish in the diet. And we know that uh, fatty fish can be very healthy for you. Um, in fact, uh, there's a lot of advantages here. So it helps to lower blood pressure. It helps reduce risk of heart arrhythmias, risk of fit, having a fatal heart attack, uh, colon and rectal cancers, um, helps reduce the risk of nutrient deficiencies over a vegan diet or a purely vegetarian diet as you also include omega-3s and another source of protein in your diet. Um, iron can be mitigated by eating a pescatarian diet if you include clams and oysters and mussels. And B12, zinc, vitamin T, D, and calcium are all mitigated when you're consuming you know, fish, the fatty fish in particular, eggs, and milk and dairy products. So you can mitigate a lot of the nutrient deficiencies we see with vegan and vegetarian diets by including fish in the diet. So um, no judgment here, always a choice as to what you want to include as you are developing your plant-based diet. Uh, but if you are willing to eat fish, it certainly can be uh, helpful in mitigating some of those nutrient deficiencies. So. Some of the concerns with um, a pescatarian diet is there can be exposure to mercury from some fish. So some of those larger fish, including the king mackerel, marlin, orange roughy, shark, swordfish, tilefish, and a couple of the types of tuna ahi and big eye tuna in particular, you can uh, mitigate some of that risk by eating some of the smaller fish, um, clams, um, oysters, mussels, scallops, um, those do not contain as much mercury. There's also the concern about being able to um, obtain fresh fish here in the Midwest, in the center of the, the country. So um, our fish is frozen, typically, when it comes from the coasts. and we can still though get some really good fish in our area. It just is going to be frozen and then um, probably thawed or we will thaw it ourselves in, that, in certain cases. So um, there can be that, that disruption to getting fresh fish here. Um, and there's also concern about damage to water ecosystems um, from fish farming or trawling. So if you're removing one sort of fish from an area, um, it, you can certainly destroy the habitat for the other fish that are living and feeding in that area. So here's just a recipe. Again, if you're trying to mitigate B or zinc and iron deficiency, um, uh, linguine with clams and oysters could be a very good choice. Um, this recipe will be out on my um, Pinterest page and probably in our group scroll as well. So you can find a lot of versions of this recipe online. But what I like to do when making it is substitute one of the cans of clams with a can of oysters. So that helps to um, increase that uh, nutrient zinc in your diet. So you're getting a good amount of iron and zinc when you do that substitution. And it's a really delicious meal as well. And again, um, always, you know, your choice in deciding what type of plant-based diet you want to eat. Um, but certainly eating fish can help mitigate some of those nutrient deficiencies. So politarian, um, that would be eating and including chicken in your diet. Um, so an advantage here is, again, you're removing the red meat from the diet and the processed meats. Um, and that can help reduce that risk of heart disease. We know that eating less red meat or no red meat will decrease that risk of colorectal cancer as well. You, we also see a decreased risk of type 2 diabetes. And when you start to think back um, to our 
earlier talk on the amount of water it takes to raise uh, beef, uh, poultry requires a lot less water than other livestock to raise. So um, that can be helpful to our planet. And then we would mitigate the nutrient deficiency of protein by adding chicken in the diet. So the concerns with politarian diet, there can still be some risk of nutrient deficiencies if you're not eating red meat or fish. And those would be mainly iron and omega-3 because we do get a lot of those omega-3s from the fatty fish and iron is um, abundant in our red meats. Uh, poultry sources of iron are actually pretty small, about one milligram in three ounces. And we're looking for that eight to 18 milligrams per day, um, more for women who are premenopausal. Um, pre and so B12, zinc, vitamin D, and calcium can be mitigated if consuming chicken, eggs, and milk and dairy products. Uh, but again, you have to be careful with the nutrients of iron and omega-3 if you're not consuming red meat or fish. Flexitarian, this diet's become popular, I'd say over the maybe the last 15 years or so. Um, we call it semi-vegetarian. So it's mostly a plant-based diet, um, but you can enjoy meat, seafood, and animal products in the flexitarian diet. Uh, generally uh, about nine to 26 ounces a week, or maybe about on average one meal, three to four ounces per day. Um, but it's not a lazy vegetarian diet because you are actively trying not to eat a lot of meat in the diet, but yet you're being flexible with your diet. You know, if you're going to friends or if you get hungry for a steak or if you are finding that you're iron deficient and you maybe need to have some red meat or clams or shellfish in your diet. Um, so the wider variety in the flexitarian diet helps to mitigate those nutrient deficiencies and including milk and dairy products, eggs and various proteins, animal sources, um, just help prevent those deficiencies from happening in the first place that you can see when you might go to a vegan um, or vegetarian diet that doesn't include all of these sources of nutrients. So just a little bit more information on the flexitarian diet. It's based on the following principles. You would still be mostly eating fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains as you would in the other uh, vegetarian type diets. Um, you do focus on plant sources of protein instead of the animal sources, but you have that flexibility to incorporate those meat and animal products from time to time. Um, other principles, you want to eat the least processed, most natural form of foods, and you want to limit added sugar and sweets. So benefits of the flexitarian diet are very similar to other plant-based diets, help improve heart health, uh, reduce your risk of diabetes and certain types of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer. And just a little bit more information on the flexitarian diet. It has been ranked very highly by US News and World Report over the last several years. They do a ranking of the most popular diets every year. Um, and you can find this information online if you're interested by going to US News and World Report. Um, but I did just kind of classify here some of their, their top rankings. So. For best overall diets, flexitarian tied for second. So it tied with the DASH diet. The Mediterranean diet was at the top of the list there. For best weight loss diet, it tied for number one with Weight Watchers. So it is uh, very helpful for helping to lose weight. For best diets for healthy eating, it took second place behind the DASH and Mediterranean diet. 
and for easiest diets to follow, it took third behind Mediterranean diet and the Weight Watchers diet. So it is a very highly ranked diet, just so you know and are aware of that. So our next slide, our last slide here today is a challenge to help you explore a variety of plant-based dinner options. And again, this is part of the um, 10 principles that we read from oldways.com in the very beginning on how to begin transitioning to a more plant-based diets. So making a vegetarian meal one night a week to start. And then once you start to find some recipes that you like, maybe start to incorporate more uh, vegetarian or vegan meals each week until you're eating more plant-based foods. So that's all for this week. Next week, we will start um, our fourth class here and it will be understanding plant protein. So we'll dive deeper into talking about what plant sources are complete proteins and what types of plant sources you com can combine to make complete amino acid profiles to make those complete proteins. So thanks for joining and I'll see you next week.